Hi, this is Terry Couty with Deep Sea Foundation, and I am back in the office of my physical therapist, Leslie Drotty. Welcome. <laughs> and you. Leslie is a certified lymphedema therapist. She took me through my physical therapy after my mastectomy, seven months later, with my deep flat breast reconstruction. So, Leslie. Yes, ma'am. Two weeks after I had my deep flat, mm -hmm. I traveled to San Antonio, we're in Arizona. So right when I left and got all of my drains out, some people don't get them out before they go, but I did. Mm -hmm. Dr. Crisopolo, my breast surgeon, or I'm sorry, my breast reconstruction surgeon, told me, I want you to start physical therapy. You explain to them what you did, what the order was, and why it helped so much. Okay, well, um, after any reconstructive procedure, of course, you want to start physical therapy right away with a lymphedema therapist, ideally, because controlling that swelling and getting that normal skin mobility back as soon as possible is going to give you the best outcome. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think, why Dr. C really emphasizes that. And I have to say I wholeheartedly agree with him. But one of the things that he wanted you to have was... Um, ultrasound. Uh, now, everybody's probably heard of ultrasound, and I think most people think of it as, you know, pictures for the baby or another visual um, medical test. But in the therapy world, for those of you that don't know, we use ultrasound in a different way. It's the same technology, but there's a different frequency. So we don't generate pictures with our ultrasound. We use ultrasound waves um, to increase the blood flow to a certain area of the body. So for instance, with the deep flap, there's fat grafting that takes place. And so ultrasound can be used to increase the blood flow to those fat grafts so that they have a better chance of taking and not becoming necrotic. Um, and if memory serves me correctly, and it may not, but there's also those vessel grafts mm -hmm. that are done with the deep. And so a little bit of ultrasound in those regions increases the blood flow to that area so that you have um, less risk of those vessel grafts mm -hmm. failing. And I'm sure if I'm wrong on that, um, the wonderful surgeons at PRMA will be quick to correct me. So, uh, Yeah, you keep using the word blood flow, and that's mm -hmm. so important after breast reconstruction surgery, especially yes. if you're doing autologous breast reconstruction because they – they do the anastomosis of the blood vessels, which mm -hmm. is the tying together. We want those viable. We want those to remain, uh, you know, with rich blood flow mm -hmm. after you have your breast reconstruction. So you brought your... I brought my little machine. That looks so familiar. It, it is. This is actually a new one since you and I work together. It is. So it's it more of the different. latest and greatest. It's one, it's one of my favorite tools. Uh-huh. So you can demo on me whatever you want to do. I can. I'm not going to disrobe, however. No, but this is it. This is what an ultrasound head looks like if you haven't seen one before. And I know a lot of people have, but sometimes I think you know we don't know what we're in for after a surgical procedure. Mm -hmm. So um, this is what it looks like, and you can just give me your arm. So all I would do is put gel, obviously yes. not on her arm, but um, put some gel on there and just rub it around like this and I use a setting I'm not going to go into the details of my settings because they don't make sense no. outside of medical documentation but I put it on a setting that's very gentle you really shouldn't feel much of anything it should feel nice it shouldn't feel achy or uncomfortable and I always tell my patients if you feel achy or uncomfortable or anything unusual you need to tell me right away yeah this shouldn't feel uncomfortable at all and if it does that means I need to adjust a setting on the machine or that something's wrong and I need to address that and evaluate that. So, yeah, we always communicated, I remember. Always, always, always. And, and kind of yeah. got, just talked about a lot of things when you were doing it, because it takes time. And I want That's you guys true. to know, too, um, you do disrobe for this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just, just to be clear, you disrobe, you lay on this nice, comfortable bed. Leslie always made sure that I was comfortable. She... Uh, constantly monitored my pain level and made all those adjustments for me um, and I always felt better after I got out of here I know yes it's great so so what about um, let's just quickly go over some deep tissue massage for the scars mm -hmm. real quickly 
dig in. <laughs> Isn't that what I told you? Dig in. No, I but know. you, you don't yeah. want to start doing scar tissue mobilization too early. You want to make sure that those scars are um, healed sufficiently. Mm -hmm. So then once they are, and that's why I think, especially with a deep where there's such an extensive surgical procedure that's been done, it is helpful to be under the care of a therapist because they can really assess your scars in different areas that, you know, looking on yourself, you just don't have the same angle, so you can't assess it the same way. So once those scars are fully healed, then you can begin to mobilize them. So there's different ways to do that. And with the deep, Terry, it's more than just where the incisional scars are. When you're taking tissue away from the abdomen and then you're, you know, attaching tissue other places, there's other skin tightness and skin adhesions that can occur. So it's important to mobilize all of that. And some of that mobilization on the skin that was not cut can begin before the scars are completely healed. Mm -hmm. Of course, we don't want to be too aggressive because we don't want to pull anything apart. So there's a right. lot of different factors. Right. And some of that I think probably must sound scary if you don't know what you're in for. But was it that scary when we got started? No, it wasn't because you communicated everything so well to me. You told me, okay, what did I, tell her? I well, you told me I'm going to work some of these scars, mm -hmm. and she did have to dig in deep, especially some of my abdominal scars. Mm -hmm. But it's like I told you, when I left here, I felt so much better. It, it's I don't know how to compare it other than to say. Um, you know, when you go to the gym and you kind of have to psych yourself up to get to the gym mm -hmm. and once you get that workout, you leave there and it's kind of like an endorphin rush. It wasn't an endorphin rush, but I felt more mobilized, like you said, mm -hmm. and it felt a lot better. I'm not going to lie to you. There were times when you had to dig deep, but you told me, mm -hmm. you go, this is my going to, you know, have a little bit of pain with it. Um, but you always communicated that with so ask your physical therapist, say, monitor my pain level with me. This gal right here is a rock star in my, you know, uh, books because she did communicate that well so, so well to me. So, Well, and I think another thing just to be aware of is, you know, therapists will use their hands and then yeah. we'll teach you um, how to do some self-massage, skin mobilization, scar mobilization at home. But we also sometimes will use some other tools. Let me grab this. Excuse me just thought of this. This is my scariest looking tool. <laughs> it does look it's, a little it's, scary. It's scary. If you've never seen it before and you don't know how it's used, then it looks like an instrument of torture. <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> but something like this, and I'm just going to kind of bring it in here. There's lots of different massage tools out there. This is one I actually had designed specifically for scar and skin mobilization and, wow. and lymphedema. So um, this one has a flatter edge. It's about, what would you say, a fourth of an inch? Mm -hmm. Fourth of an inch, flatter edge. It's got a little weight to it. This is stainless steel. But you use that. Mm -hmm. So if you have stiff skin, okay, mm -hmm. like you had down in here. Right. Your therapist can actually use something like this and move that tissue. So what it does is it kind of grabs the skin and moves the tissue right underneath the skin where things tend to get stuck instead of, rubbing and causing skin irritation or causing more pain. Now it can be used to do some of that deeper work like we did and be very, very precise with it. Mm -hmm. So it looks scary, but a lot of times this is much more comfortable than someone's fingers. Okay. So we do use that now as well. Really good stuff. Right. Brings back, I hope so. Brings back memories. I don't think I'm going to lay on the bed anytime soon <laughs> again, but she did great stuff with me. Thanks so much. Thank you. Absolutely.